Hi, I have welcome to Cardingo. So in this episode of our Lead Code series, we are going to solve the 1290th question of Lead Code problems, which is converting a binary number in the form of a linked list into an integer or a decimal number. So that is our question that we are going to solve. It's a very simple question involving a linked list. It's just going to involve traversing a linked list and a little manipulation using integers. So let us get to know the question and we'll develop an algorithm. And as usual, we'll learn later co-written lead code. Now let's get started. So here we are given a linked list. So given head, which is a reference node to a singly linked list, the value of each node in the linked list is either a zero or a one. Okay. The linked list holds the binary representation of a given number. Okay. So every decimal number, as we know, has a binary representation. For example, 5 has a binary representation of 101, 7 has a binary representation of 111. And similarly, we know that every number has a binary representation. So these numbers or these bits are stored in each node of a linked list. Okay. So with that information or with that I given to us as input, we have to form the decimal value of this given linked list. So that is what we are given here. So return the decimal value of the number in the given linked list. And here is the most important point. So the most significant bit is at the head of the linked list. Okay, so what do I mean by the most significant bit? The most significant bit is the one which has the highest power. So for example, in 100, 0 is at the 0th or 1's position and again the next 0 is at the 10th position, 1 is at the 100th position, right? So the one which is at the leftmost has the most significance because it has the most value and that is called the most significant bit. And similarly, the most significant bit in a binary number is stored at the head. So we have to read it from left to right and that is what they mean by this. So this is given to us as a question. So essentially the summary of this is we are given a linked list. We are given essentially the head node of a linked list which can be used to traverse the whole single linked list. It contains 0 or 1 representing the binary number or binary representation of a given decimal number. We have to convert it into that exact decimal number. Okay, let's get to an example and develop an algorithm based on that. So here we have an example. So there are three nodes basically here, 1, 0 and 1. As we all know, the binary representation of 5 is 101 and hence our answer must be 5. But how do we verify that? Okay, so this digit, the last digit is of 2 power 0, 2 power 1 and 2 power 2. So if we multiply 1 into 2 power 0 plus 0 into 2 power 1 plus 1 into 2 power 2, 0, 1 and 2. If we add all these numbers, the result of this expression would be 5, right? And that is how we usually convert a binary number into a decimal number. And that is the exact logic that we are going to use here. But as we all know, we have the head node and not the tail. So hence, we must start with the first node and go towards the last node. We can't start from here saying this is 2 power 0. We have to start from here. That is the catch here. Okay, let's go and develop the algorithm here. So the first thing that we need to know in order to understand a linked list is how a linked list is structured. Linked list is a collection of nodes and each node contains two parts, a value part and a reference part. So the value part contains the exact value that is stored and the reference part points to the next node that comes after this node. So this node is pointing to the value or the node that contains the value 0 and hence this is the value and this is the reference. So every node in this linked list is of the form value and a reference combined together forming a node. So this is the basic structure of a linked list. We must know this in order to code a linked list. Moving on to the given example. The total is set to 1 because we have a 1 in the head node. So total is equal to the value that is present in the head node. Okay. So what happens 
when our pointer moves to the next node. What must be done? So initially our value is 1, but when we move to the next node, we are increasing the power, right? So essentially, this 1 is at the 2 power 0 position. But when we include this value 0 to our number, this 1 must be incremented to 2 power 1 position and the 0 comes to the 2 power 0 position. Similar to what we usually do in, uh, you know, earlier examples where we usually code uh, some of the, the 0 uh, reversing a given number in uh, algorithms like that, what we would do? We would increment this value and then add the newer value to the 2 power 0 position or 10 power 0 in that case, right? So, 1 is incremented to 2 power 1 and 0 is added to 2 power 0. So, that is how we do it. But, how do we increment 2 power 0 to 2 power 1? How do you increment the value? Just by multiplying it by 2. So, that is how we convert a number from 2 power 0's place into 2 power 1's place. And if it were in 2 power 1, it would convert to 2 power 2 when multiplied by 2, right? So, every power would get incremented by 1 by multiplying it by 2. So, 2 power 0 becomes 2 power 1, 2 power 1 becomes 2 power 2, 2 power 2 becomes 2 power 3, obviously, by multiplying it by 2. So, our logic is going to work like, first, we will take the head node, we will add that value into the total. Now, when taking the next node, we will multiply the total by 2 and then add it, so that we are incrementing the base from 2 power 0 to 2 power 1 and then adding the new value to 2 power 0. So, initially our total was 1, we are multiplying it by 2, making it 2 and adding the 0 which is the value that is present to the second node. Moving on, now we have the value total equal to 2, right? So, when we include the next node, what should we do? Again the same process, already existing total which is 2 multiplied by 2, we are shifting it to the next base and then adding the newer value to the 2 power zeros place. So, already existed value was 2, multiplying it by 2 and then adding the newer value. So, 2 times 2 plus 1 would give us the answer as 5 and that is our final answer since we have come to the end of the linked list. So, this is how we solve this question. We start from the head node, have the head value as the total value initially. We travel all these nodes until we reach the last element. At each iteration, we multiply the existing total times 2 and then add the newer value. Why do we do that? We are incrementing the base so that we can accommodate the newer bit. Since we are including an element bit by bit, after each iteration, we are shifting all those values to one bit to the left and then incrementing or adding the newer value. This is the logic that we are using. Now, let's get to lead code and code this algorithm. So, let's start by declaring the variable total. So, int total is defaultly set to head dot value. So, as we saw there were two parts, the value part and the reference part. So, since we saw the value is obtained by having this dot val. So, the dot operator gives us the value of the head node. So, what this means is declare a new value called total and assign the value of the head node to the total variable. Since we know the value of the head node for the example that we saw is 1, the total is set to 1. Now, we can have a pointer to point the head node and that would obviously have the data type as list node. So, list node pointer p is equal to our head node. So, why do we do this is we are going to use this pointer to traverse this linked list and reach the end of the linked list and that is how we are going to use this pointer. So, what is our condition going to be? So, we have to traverse this linked list until we reach the last element. So, how do we state that? Our linked list is fully traversed only when we reach the null value that is present at the last node, right? So, we know 1 is pointing to 0, 0 is pointing to 1 and the last one would be pointing to the null value representing the linked list has ended or come to an end. So, we have to make sure this process goes on until our p value is not equal to null, okay? 
you can also start with the total value set to 0. Okay, so you can set the total value set to 0 or you can start from the next value because we already accounted for the first element. The first element is already added to total. So we can just start from the second element. Okay, or we can set this value as 0 and we can start from the head node. Both would give us the same answer. Okay, so we are traversing this uh, linked list until we reach the last element. So what are we going to do now? So we have this total. Now the first step is to multiply the total by 2 and then add the value, right? So total is equal to total times 2. So the already existing value is multiplied by 2 and then the newer value is added p dot value. So the newer value is now added to the total. Now, is it over? No. You would have to move this pointer p to the next node in order to avoid an infinite loop. Only then we will reach the last node. So p is equal to p dot next. So this moves our pointer from the head node that is the first node that we are pointing to the next node. And the next iteration it will move to the next next node. And this process will continue until we reach the last element. So once the last element is reached, the pointer would be equal to null and hence this would come out of the while loop. Now what do we do now? After this, we would have to return this value named total and that contains our answer. So return total. This would be our answer. Now let's verify this by running the sample test cases that are given. Testing for the sample test cases that contains an error. List node is not a functional interface. Okay, I'm sorry. We have to use the dot next operator. I've used the pointer. So that that's the C++ representation of it. So I got confused based on that. So now it works perfectly. So submitting the code, testing for all the other test cases. Yeah, we have successfully verified our code. So the mistake that I did was using the arrow operator, which seems to be the syntax that is used in C and C++. So I got confused based on that. So in Java, we use the dot operator in order to access the values because all these are objects, right? There we use structures, here we use objects. So I got confused based on that. So this is the representation that we are going to use. So this is the question of converting a binary linked list that is given to us into a decimal number. I hope you understood this question. We have a separate playlist reserved for our lead code solutions. You can always check that out. And if you love our content, please like this video and consider subscribing to Godivo. See you in the next episode of our lead code series. Until then, bye bye.